In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of resonance in organic chemistry and why it's important, how it's going to become very important when we start to talk about reactions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw out a very simple looking molecule like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a very, very simple reaction called, well, it's not really that important what it's called. We're going to imagine it as a Lewis acid, Lewis base reaction. So we've got a carbocation present here. This is carbon. This is a carbocation. Remember, it's got an empty orbital, so it can accept a lone pair. So in other words, it's think of it like a Lewis acid. And on top here, on top of the arrow, we have water. And water, having lone pairs, can act like a Lewis base. And from previous videos, we talked about how we can predict reactivity of molecules based on the fact that, well, opposite charges attract, like charges repel. And if you think about where the partial charges are in a molecule, it can really help you to figure out where the charge density is in a molecule and just knowing that that when we're doing a reaction we're always going to go from high electron density so from the nucleophile to an electrophile which is low electron density so nucleophile to electrophile or if you want to think of it like from base to acid from negative to positive uh, yin to yang so this is how reactions work in organic chemistry and based on nothing but formal, but, but the concept of dipoles, uh, this is how we would expect this reaction to proceed. So we take a lone pair on the oxygen and we combine it with the carbocation. Again, sort of think of it as a Lewis acid. It's going to accept a lone pair of electrons. And in so doing, we are going to form a new bond, right? We're going to form a bond between carbon and the oxygen one of the lone pairs is going to become a new bond on the carbon and now we're going to have a formal charge of plus one on that oxygen because it's gone from sh owning a lone pair to sharing right maybe we'll draw that bond there in blue just to show this is how we show this with the arrow okay and let's draw in the rest of the hydrogens here just to make sure now, something interesting happens when we label, and we can do this, we can label a molecule such as this with atoms which are still carbon, but they're labeled through isotopes. So, meaning that they have different numbers of neutrons, they still behave as carbons, but we can actually tell using some advanced techniques, and they're actually not that difficult technique, you might learn about them later in the course. We can actually tell some of these carbons apart. So if we were to do an experiment where we've labeled these carbons, you would expect, based on what I've drawn here, that we would get exclusively this product. So if we label this, let's just say that this is a green carbon and this is a blue carbon, but we'll show later on, you learn about isotopes, you'll learn that we can actually do this and in, in, there's a more uh, different way to label these carbons actually it has physical meaning as opposed to uh, just colors. We'd find that this is indeed one of the products of this reaction. So on carbon one, which is green, we have a product where carbon one has combined with, with water here. However, that is not the only product of this reaction. We also find, and this is the interesting part, because we would not have predicted this based simply on formal charge, we would not, or on dipoles, on partial charges, we would not have predicted this. This is interesting. We also have uh, some about an equal proportion of this molecule where we've got a positive charge on our oxygen. And let's draw this out as a blue bond here. And we've labeled this, right? So this was blue, actually, and this is blue. And this is green, and this is green. So what we see, okay, is two products. If we label these carbons appropriately with isotopes, we see two products and they're formed as a 50 to 50 mixture. So, or one to one. In other words, we're formed equally. So in other words, we don't just get this product, which we might expect if we draw the molecule like this. We get an equal proportion of the molecule where the water has added to the blue carbon. 
So how do we explain this? Because it looks like there's just a positive charge on carbon-1. Well, the best explanation for why this occurs okay, is that there's actually two different ways to draw out the, the what we call the pi electrons, the, the, the double bonding electrons, in this molecule. Now, I've chosen one way to draw it, which is on top, but there's actually a second way to do it, which I'm going to draw here. So we could actually draw a molecule like this, where instead of drawing a double bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3, we could draw a double bond between carbon 1 and carbon 2. And this would mean that carbon 1 is a carbocation, and that carbon 2 is, or carbon, sorry, carbon 3 is a carbocation, and carbon 1 is part of a double bond. So that would give us, that's green, that's blue. Okay, and so what I've done here is just shown a different way of drawing, arranging the pi electrons in this molecule. So they're different. different arrangement of pi electrons in other words you know double bonds and these are equivalent actually and all we've really done is moved a double bond between these two molecules different ways of drawing the same molecule and we can actually these molecules being the same we say that these molecules are related by resonance. Resonance. And we use this special arrow, this double-sided arrow, to, to represent resonance. So this is the double-sided resonance arrow. So right here. Which is to say that this molecule can exist in we can draw this molecule in one of two forms. We can draw it as in the top form, or we can draw it in the bottom form. And in the top form, if we drew it that way, it would make sense for our, our molecule of water to attack carbon-1. If we drew the same molecule, except we draw it in the bottom form, it would make sense for water to attack it, carbon-3, to give this molecule. And these two forms are related by resonance. Now, one thing which is very important to know about a resonance is that even though we've drawn these two, we haven't drawn, notice that the type of arrow is very important. These molecules do not interconvert. So it's important to think that these molecules are not going back and forth between each other, but actually these are just two different ways of drawing the same molecule. And the most accurate way to think of this, this molecule is one in which we can't actually draw very well using chemical bonds. But it is possible to measure bond lengths in these molecules. And what we do, what we find when we measure the, the lengths of the, double, of the bonds, so a single bond is usually a carbon-carbon single bond, is 1.5 angstroms. And a, usually a double bond is about 1.4 angstroms. So if the molecule existed in, in either this form or this form and was interchanging back and forth, we would expect to see one molecule or one double bond with a length of 1.4, of, of 1 which would be the double bond, and one which had a length of 1.5, which is the single bond. And that's actually not what we see. What we see is the fact that both of these bonds have partial double bond character, they're about 1.45 angstroms apart. So this is, they have partial uh, double bond character. And not only that, the positive charge is distributed equally between these two carbon atoms. So this positive charge, the, the, the carbocation, is actually distributed equally between both ends of this carbocation. Which is to say that the true structure of the molecule is a hybrid 
of those two resonance forms. So it's not going back and forth, just like, you know, you might be the product of your mother and your father, but you don't go back and forth between, your, you know, being your mother and being your father. You're a, a, a hybrid of both. You've got components of both, you know, 50% of one, 50% of the other. In that sense, in this particular case, this true structure of the molecule of the out, what we're going to call the allyl cation, is a hybrid of this top resonance form, this bottom resonance form, a one-to-one -one mixture of these two resonance forms. And so the actual structure of the molecule uh, is, is a one-to-one -one hybrid of both. So that when we take uh, the allyl cation, we form the allyl cation, and we react with water, we find that, again, we get a one-to-one -one mixture of these two compounds where we just label it. So there's not really any significant difference in chemical reactivity, but we obtain a one-to-one -one mixture. And we'll see that this is actually kind of a special case uh, where we have two resonance forms which are exactly equal in energy. It's not always going to be the case in chemistry where that we're going to have equal resonance forms, but this is one of the simpler examples. And in subsequent videos, we'll go through some of those extra examples.